through you, I send another message. It is this. Let no thought of revenge or crisis animate Republicans because of our deaths. We die for the truth. Vindication will come. The myth will be cleared away and brothers in blood will before long be brothers once more in arms against the oppressor of our country, Imperial England. In this belief, I die happy, forgiving all, as I hope myself to be forgiven. The path the people of Ireland must tread is straight and broad and true, though narrow. Only by following it can they be men. It is a hard road, but it is the road our Saviour followed, the road of sacrifice. The Republic lives. Our deaths may get us certainty. I had hoped that someday I might rest in some quiet place besides grandfather, grandmother, and Castleton. Not amidst the worldly pomp of Black Nevin. But if it is to be in prison and clay, it is all the sweeter. For many of our best lie there. I send my love to Aunt Maggie and Julie and Jane and Annie, all my cousins in Wexford and Dublin, Claire and Anna. Tell Patsy also I send my love, and Father Finney and Father McGinnis. Go to Mrs. Pierce. She will comfort you. I intended writing to Mrs. Woodman's family, but time prevents me doing so. Give my love to them all. I have had the chaplain to see me. It is sad, but I cannot agree to accept the bishop's pastor. My conscience is quite clear, thank God. With all the gales, I believe that those who die for Ireland have no need for prayer. God bless and protect you and comfort you. Your loving son, Willie. Vengeance, it was. 
I should like to play something now before I go. A happy tune. A soothing melody. Something my mother would like. I think a lullaby, perhaps. Dear Jesus, what am I doing? I've drunk blood on this holy morning of the Immaculate Conception. Oh, dear Mother of God, you suffered yourself, knowing that your son was suffering, not for himself, but for all mankind. Mother, my son Liam, what more has he to suffer for Ireland? Grant us peace, O oh, sacred heart, have mercy on us all, and grant eternal rest unto them, O oh Lord. Lord, I'm so glad I sent him in the violin. If you have music, Lord, you're never alone. Willie's music means so much to him. He couldn't survive in there without it. I wish I could cradle him in my arms and sing to him one last time, just before the dawn breaks and this holy day begins. to have spoken with Ernie, Ernie O'Malley, to stand shoulder to shoulder with him one last time. He could recite for me one of Shakespeare's sonnets, and I could sing for him the copy book. We walked into the forecourt together. Hiding in the shadows we heard the martial tramp of men ready for battle. We couldn't be sure if it was our own men, or if it was the staters. But when the gates swung open, we recognized our own. They were without uniforms, proudly carrying their rifles. The Timberary men had come. It felt like jumping up and down and cheering as we stepped forward to greet us. They came beside us. Even Tipperary men. Can't take them now. Oh, Bruce, you can follow the tribe of the land. To holler and run it, but land in the pine. To stay like it, and you would have hit the pine. To holler the clean as the flower of the mold. Land in it, boys! At 7.30 a.m., the four prisoners, along with the chaplain, were led out into the prison yard. They were placed against the prison wall. Each of them was blindfolded, although Rory O'Connor specifically asked not to be. Joseph McKelvey said, Goodbye, boys. God bless everybody. 
At 8 a.m., the officer in charge gave the order to fire. The majority of those fired at Roy O'Connor. He detailed five men to fire at each prisoner. But this didn't happen. Roy O'Connor fell dead immediately. There were so many bullets in him, his clothes went on fire. None of the other prisoners were dead. Two of them were on the ground. I went over and I gave him a coup de grace by a revolver. As I was doing this, Joseph McKelvey yelled to, the, yelled to the medical officer, for Christ's sake, kill me, doc. The doctor, seeing that I was standing in a daze, came over and grabbed me by my Sam Brown belt and pulled me down to Joseph McKelvey, who said, another one. I shot him in the chest through the paper target. It wasn't enough. And he repeated, another one. This I gave him. I was satisfied he was dead. <laughs>